Yep, here we go. Thursday morning. God, this is what the doctor ordered, isn't it? This is handsome. Lovely. I've been able to walk the dog and got the pepper and all like that. So Cornish been day today, so that's even better altogether. So and they fork I think the forecast is in for the weekend be quite nice. So uh, I took a little group around yesterday for a bit of a his history talk down around Foundry. We had a fantastic time. I met our my wife's cousin that we'd never met before from Canada, and that was a fantastic as they come over and she come over and had a cup of tea with us yesterday. It was absolutely she absolutely loved Cornwall, so well, I told her there isn't nowhere else in the world. This is God's country. Anyhow, um, just stay safe and keep smiling. That's what I love it. Let's have a prayer for a few days like this natal Christmas. Now, a few birthdays. Dominic Palmer, a great friend of mine. It was his birthday yesterday. But uh, happy birthday to you yesterday, Dominic. And uh, hope to see you soon. Anyhow, now, Maureen McGowan is another dear friend of mine. Happy birthday to you tomorrow, which is Friday tomorrow. Chris Anton is a relation of mine on my mother's side. Happy birthday to you on uh, Friday, boy. Jonathan Barnago, again, another local lad, and pass on our regards to your mum and dad, Jonathan, please. And then Mark Sampson. It is, they're all tomorrow, all Friday, so it's going to be quite a busy day for all these people. And then our daughter there, Karen, Karen Jose, um, is her birthday on Sunday. So go on out and treat yourself. Go and buy someone, Karen. Have a bit of a... Have a lovely day of them anyhow. All right. Now I'm going to do a David Prowse one here today. This one here is called The Beast of Bodmin Moor. Few things in life are guaranteed for all its vast complexions, though death and taxes, so they say, are notable exceptions. But there is one other certainty, as sombre and as sorry. From time to time the Gosmore Bridge will seize a passing lorry. There's something in that quaint old frame that lorries find attractive. It stirs their diesel, mists their screens, and renders brakes inactive. Without a care, they sally forth like flies towards a spider, and find themselves engaged, then grasped, and swallowed up inside her. So tempting are these painted lips, despite the signs of warning, or thoughts of caution vaporise beneath her winsome awning. And then, too late, her jaws clamp tight around the unsuspecting, before there comes a sickening sound of crumpled steel dissecting. And so another victim falls to legend's long tradition, which baffles electronic beams and sneers on demolition. Like highwaymen of distant times who catalogue their murders, the old bridge scrapes another notch upon its ancient girders. Its fame has spread to foreign parts, so potent are its powers. Upon each new outrageous act, spectators coup for hours. Behind their radiator's steam, they gaze in stricken wonder at that which never seems to move, yet tears our trucks asunder. But word of this phenomenon at last would reach the city. The cabinet at once convened and set up a committee. It members meant to cog cogitate on countless lurid stories, and threw their hands up in the air and blamed it on the Tories. But as reports kept flooding in of ambush and destruction, they gathered round an expert team conversant with abduction. So many were there keen to see the challenge such a quarry to save expense and train delays. They sent them on a lorry. The message on the mobile phone was dogged with incoherence, a strangled rambling mix of words and static in interference. It said, I think we found the bridge and at last the engine's running and we would still have had a, a roof. But the darn thing so is coming. Have a nice weekend. Take care.